Okay, what are the accounts? Well, this is an accrual adjustment, so uh, we're probably going to be increasing an asset and in, uh, increase. Uh, well, no, and, and this one we're going to be increasing an expense, debit expense, and. Uh, uh, credit and a liability because we're going to be owing something, right? We're going to owe money. This is opposite of the one before where we were earning interest. This one we're paying interest. And actually, it's the full $200 because the $200 is what we owe this month. All right, so what's the journal entry? Interest expense, debit, debit, interest expense, credit, interest payable, right? The payable is going up. We own it. We haven't paid it. The expense, the expense happened this period, matching principle, recorded this period. All right, moving on. G. Round belly needs to record income tax expense. Assuming a 40% tax rate on a NIBT, net income before taxes, of uh, $5,150. All right, income tax expense. Uh, nobody likes income taxes. I don't. Uh, everybody has to pay it. Right. Income tax expense is just that. It's an expense, right? So how do we, this is an accrual adjustment. So for increasing expense, we need to increase the liability, right? They, they're both going the same way. So. Uh, let's let's record income tax expense. The calculation is 40%, right? I said assuming 40% tax, 40% times the 5150. That brings us to uh, $2,060. Debit income tax expense, credit income tax payable, right? Increase expense, increase payable, accrual adjustment, right? Increase the liability. Follow that to the T accounts. Income tax payable, income tax expense. H. Round Belly declared a dividend on September 30th. The $500 dividend will be paid, ca paid in cash to stockholders in early um, October. All right. This is an interesting one. Have goods and services been exchanged? Well, you remember, no cash is going out the door. Okay, so no resources there. Um, services. No, there's really no services, but hey, we're telling them we're going to pay it, right? Um, and if we earned it this month and we say we're going to pay it, we, you know, we made money this month, so we're going to pay a return to our shareholders next month. Um, so the earning happened this period, and we're going to pay it next period, but uh, we earned it this period, right? So matching principle, if we earned it this period, and even though we're going to pay it next period, well, it's, it's this period's expense, right? So a transaction happened because we're promising to give them something, right? We're promising to give them, so we're exchanging, not necessarily a payable or, a, you know, like a, a, a written agreement, but we're telling them we're gonna pay them, so we're, we're, we're gonna have to pay them. So this this is kind of in between, it's a, it's a, not observable, unobservable, it's in between, but just remember dividend payables, if they're declared, you gotta record the liability in the period they're declared. All right, so they're declared as of September 30th, we gotta pay it. So we need to record a liability, and remember, uh, dividends declared. This is a contra, or this goes against our retained earnings. So, you know, we got to record dividend declared, dividend payable. I'll get into more about where the dividend declared goes uh, um, on, the, on the balance sheet and, and which, which account in a second. But here, okay, so that's our journal entry: dividend declared increase. Because we're remember we're decreasing our stockholders' equity because stockholders' equity is a, re, or a a dividend is a reduction of stockholders' equity. We earn all this profit, we retain it in the company, so we have this this retainage. But now we're going to pay some of that. We need to decrease that. And so you remember the equation: how do you decrease stockholders' equity? How do you decrease the liability? Well, you a debit, right? A debit. So we need to debit that, and then we credit a payable because we're going to pay it out. We owe something. We have a liability. Credit payable. Uh, follow that through the T accounts right there. Balances, debit, credit. All right. So we've recorded our closing entries. Our T accounts. Remember how our T accounts? How do our T accounts get to our trial balance? Well, remember what we said. Journal. A journal entry. We record a journal entry. Debit, credit, balances, and then a ledger is a sum of all the accounts or a sum of all the transactions in an account in the journal. So the ledger. Flows. It's just the sum of all of our balance, uh, all of our transactions. The ledger flows to the trial balance because the trial balance is a snapshot of all of our accounts at a specific date, right? So the ledger that all these ending balances flow to our trial balance. These and, and remember, uh, this is the closing. Closing. We're making adjusting entries. So all this, all these entries are going to our 
trial balance and we're adjusting them and so this is our adjusted trial balance our adjusted trial balance you see here I've got an arrow you got the five hundred dollars coming here um, the twenty six the twenty six three hundred is cash but no cash happened here in any of these closing entries remember because these are unobservable events or more likely than not no cash is being exchanged and this is a cruel accounting um, not cash accounting about, so no cash happened this cash balance is carry forward I put a little asterisk here so I've, I've accumulated our transactions from lesson two, lesson three, and the lesson four, and I've included them here on the trial balance. And you'll see lesson this this balance comes from lesson three, and I've got an asterisk next to the ones that were be adjusted right here. But this is the process. This is how we prepare financial statements. We have business transactions. We record them in a journal. We sum the journal. That's our ledger balance. Our ledger balance goes to our trial balance. Our trial balance has a list of all of our accounts, right? And so our, from our trial balance, we make closing entries and we get an adjusted trial balance. And the adjusted trial balance, remember, from our trial balance, we got our balance sheet, income statement, statement, retained earnings, all of those accounts. Flip your sheet sheet. Let's flow through our adjusted trial balance to our different ba uh, income statements. Our, our th the, remember, these, we're not including the cash uh, statement cash flows here. Uh, just our balance sheet statement of uh, retained earnings and income statement. So here, on the top left, this is our adjusted trial balance. We we booked our closing entries. We, we you know we had all our, our business transactions. We had all, all all of our ledgers, and then we we adjust those for these accrual and deferred adjustments. Now we got our adjusted trial balance, and you'll see this group right here is our balance sheet, and I and I've color coded, and you can see how each of those goes to each of those accounts um, on the balance sheet. Um, some of these include adjusted. I've asterisk which ones are adjusted. This right here flows to the income statement. And this flows to statement of retained earnings. Uh, I've linked it all so you guys can follow. Uh, now let's remember this concept over here. I said we'd get back to temporary and permanent accounts. Temporary, temporary accounts, uh, I'll read this definition because it's pretty important. Temporary accounts track financial results for a limited period of time. Limited period of time, okay? So like period of time, remember income statements for a period of time. Uh, well, examples of temporary accounts are expense, revenues, dividends. These are like our income statement accounts or our statement of retained earnings accounts. These are these are not permanent. These are for a period. Remember our statement of retained earnings says for the month end or for the period end, or in this case for the month ended. Income statement says for the month ended. Temporary accounts, remember temporary accounts. Statement of retained earnings, income statement, temporary accounts. Permanent accounts, permanent accounts track financial resources from year to year. Examples of permanent accounts, liabilities, assets, equity. Wait, that's a basic accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus stockholders equity. These accounts never go away. Remember how in lesson three I talked about how our revenue expenses get to our balance sheet and get to our equation? Assets equals liabilities plus stockholders equity. That equation never goes away. That follows us through the whole time. Balance sheet, these are permanent accounts. These are always there. We can say at any specific date, what's my cash balance? Okay? It doesn't change. These are permanent accounts. Permanent. Income statement are temporary because it's only for a period, whatever period we want. And so you say if they're temporary, well, how does that work? Because I'm making entries to it, um, and if it's temporary, how do I get that entry out of there? Oh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. And this concept, you're you're probably gonna need to watch this a couple of times. This is the toughest concept for me to grasp when I was learning accounting. It may not be for you, but it was for me. I'm gonna go through it. Post. Closing entries, all right? Post-closing. Remember, we got we did our closing entries. If that wasn't enough, we need to do a post-closing entry. Post-closing entry. Okay, so we got we got our closing entries, we got to our adjusted balance, our adjusted balance gets us to our financial statements. Then we need to do this post-closing entries. What does our post-closing entry do? Our post-closing entry takes our income statement and a statement of retained earning accounts, zeroes them out. How does it zero them out? Well, we create this post-closing entry, which is the exact opposite of our current ledger balance. If you remember, revenue accounts are credits, right? So how do we zero a credit balance? We book a debit to it. We book the exact debit. From up here, you'll see our, our boat repair rental revenue, our interest revenue. We need to book the opposite. That's If you've seen our trial balance, those are credits. With a zeroed out, we debit that exact amount. Same with our other income statements accounts. Say wage expense right here, that's 10, that's 10 grand. It's a debit up here, it's an expense. Well, how do we zero it out? Zero it out with a credit. So the post-closing entry is the exact opposite of our income statement, statement and retained earnings accounts at a given time, at a, at a specific date. You know, we say for the period of, uh, 
in this case, September, this was our revenue. Okay, well, we want to start over. We want to say, well, what's, what's going to be our revenue for the next period? Well, so how do we know that if we're not for zero, if our starting point's not zero? Well, we need to start from zero. So how do we do that? We, we book a post-closing entry and zero everything out. Here he goes. Reverse everything they see. Now, the, 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 the final portion of that entry, right, because debits and credits need balance, but if, if, I'm, if I'm just flipping the income statements and retained earnings accounts, I'm going to have this amount that's going to be essentially my net income number, right? Net income is the difference between uh, revenues and expenses, so I need to book a, uh, my net income amount, and where do I book my net income amount? You see right here in red, that net income amount is my retained earnings. That is my the, the final piece to this entry. I need to put it to retained earnings because retained earnings is the accumulated profit from the company. So this is how I get, remember that uh, the, the flow chart from lesson three where I say revenues minus expenses gets to retained earnings, retained earnings plus uh, contributed capital equals our stockholders equity. Well, this is how we get to that, to the retained earnings. We book the difference between the, re the revenues and expenses and we book it to retained earnings. Also, you'll see down here, because we're declaring dividends, we need to reduce retained earnings for those dividends. That's this entry right here. Then we get to this thing right here. It's called a post-closing trial balance. The post-closing trial balance, remember I've ex remember in the past I excluded uh, accounts with a balance of zero from our trial balance. Well, you'll see down here the post-closing trial balance doesn't include any income statement accounts because all those are zero. No expenses, no revenues because we're moving forward with zero balance to see a fresh look, figure out what the revenues and expenses are for the next period. So here, post-closing trial balance, you'll see these are these assets equal the liabilities up here are they're, they're the same. The only difference is my retained earnings. I now have a retained earnings balance. Before I had a zero balance. Uh, you can see these arrows, how it all works. You know, these flow together. All these balances are interconnected. So remember, this is how this is how we're, we prepare financial statements. All right, we have a company. I, I want to recap lessons one through four because these are the most important lessons. We have a company. Remember, lesson one talked about four different types of companies. You know, you got sole proprietorship, partnership, um, corporation, LLC. Okay, those companies have transactions. Those transactions got operating, investing, financing activities. Those need to go into financial statements. Those financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, statement retained earnings, statement cash flows. Okay, how do we get to those? Well, we have these business transactions, observable, uh, external, observable, internal, unobservable events. Those transactions recorded in our journals through journal entries. Journal entries, we record journal entries. The sum of all those journal entries for a given account is a ledger balance. Our ledger balance goes to our trial balance. Our trial balance for any given, uh, our trial balance shows all of our accounts for, for a given, uh, at a given date, the balance in that account. Our trial balance, well, what do we do at month end? We need to adjust that trial balance for our deferred and, and uh, accrual adjustments. Once we've adjusted that trial balance, we can go to our financial statements, just as done here. How do we zero out our income statement accounts to go forward? Post-closing entry. Post-closing entry gets us to our post-closing trial balance, and that's where we start for the next period, and that's how financial statements are prepared. Now, this we, we went through this fast. These concepts are very difficult to understand. I, myself, it took me the longest time to understand this post-closing entry. Please watch this lesson again. Go through it. Um, you got you got flashcards. You got definitions. You got concepts there. That you'll be able to understand this. Accounting is easy. Remember to start the analysis of transaction. Stop. Remember accounting is easy. Did a transaction occur? Well, did were resources exchanged? If yes, move on. If no, stop. Okay. If yes, okay, we move on. What's the next step? What's, what are the accounts, revenues, expense, assets, liabilities, stockholders, equity? All right. Once we figure out the accounts, let's record a journal entry. What's the journal entry? Debit this, credit that. All right, now we, we know what the debits and credits are. Now put those into T accounts because our T accounts are going to show us what our ledger balance is. From our ledger balance, we're going to go to our uh, trial balance and then the whole process starts again. Anyway, that's lesson four. Thank you.